Over 100 years ago, the fastest vehicle ever was an electric car. After that, transportation and race industries shifted towards using steam and later combustion-powered propulsion. Now, so many years later, we see that the transportation industries are once again gravitating towards using electric power. More than ever is the technology available to make electric propulsion not just viable, but exciting. Hello everyone, welcome to today's event, where you will see a year filled with high efforts, innovation and progress. We are extremely excited to show you our superbike, which we have designed and built this year. My name is Daan. And my name is Steven. And we welcome you to the bike reveal of Electric Superbike Twente. We are a student team dedicated to developing the future of motorcycle racing. It is our mission to preserve racing for future generations by proving it can be done differently. In our workshop, we design, test and assemble the superbike to make it excel on the track. We put in a lot of effort as the team and we are thankful to all our partners who offer us financial and technical support. In particular, we want to thank our pole position partner, Alberts. They've played a crucial role in the development and manufacturing of our superbike. For a third time in a row, Alberts, who engineers mission critical technologies for groundbreaking industries in everyday life, is our pole position partner. This means that we are closely working together and they've been crucial in the builds of our superbikes. Sustainable transportation is important and marked Alberts and our superbike fits their two sustainable development goals, aimed at reducing energy and making an urban environment more livable through sustainable transportation. So, besides offering us financial backing, they also offer us knowledge about their mission-critical technologies for the relevant end markets. Since Albers has been supporting us since the start of Electric Superbike Twente, four years ago, they have been crucial in the development of the bike that we will reveal today, as well as previous bikes the Lion GP, the Eclipse GP and the Apex RS. For the Lion GP, they milled complex middle parts as they were heavily involved in the design and development phase of the Eclipse GP. For the Apex RS, Alberts developed the titanium black box and delivered high-end materials for an important part of the frame. This year, they again developed our titanium black box and they turned the titanium shaft that provides predictable dynamic movements between the rear suspension and chassis. Thanks to Alberts, we are able to reveal our brand new superbike today. We are thankful for their trust, enthusiasm and drive to push the boundaries together with us. Partners are not the only source of experience, of course. We are the fourth iteration of Team Electric Superbike Twente and we are standing on the shoulders of giants. Each fourth going year was focusing on one specific goal. For the first year, this was to prove that electric motorcycles were even possible. This resulted in a robust and reliable bike but still fast enough to beat the competition. For the second year, they focused on power and straight line speed. The third year, the team before us wanted to take the speed into the corners and they built a slim and agile bike. Now, with these ingredients of a true superbike at our disposal, it was up to us to make the recipe work. And here is the result. The Delta XE. The name is inspired by the engineering and teamwork behind the bike. As mentioned before, the Delta XE represents the three pillars the bike stands on. Agility, reliability and all-out speed. This theme is carried over into the livery, 
which represents our vision of these three pillars in electric racing. You can imagine, there's a lot more to the bike than just delivery. For starters, the delivery is sprayed onto the fully carbon fiber bodywork and the custom-made carbon fiber monocoque subframe, made to decrease weight and air resistance. But we can see even more of the precision engineering when we remove the bodywork. Now with the carbon fiber bodywork removed, we can see the fundamental parts to make the superbike work. Just like any other bike, we have a swing arm that holds the rear wheel, a front fork that holds the front wheel and the suspension that keeps both wheels planted on the asphalt. Because we are an electric bike, we are also carrying the electrical powertrain, from the motor to the batteries. All these individual components are held together by the frame of the superbike. You can imagine that during racing, the stresses placed on the bike are enormous. And if the bike would bend like a rubber band every time the rider gives the gas, the race would be over quickly. This is why we have chosen for a tube frame made of a high strength alloy, chromoly steel. This is a high strength steel alloy, which is not only more lighter than compared to a normal steel frame, but also offers more rigidity. Having a rigid frame is important to make the bike behave more predictable during racing. However, having your wheels rigidly attached to the frame is everything but ideal. This is why we have suspension between the wheels and the frame. So about the suspension. First up, the swing arm. The swing arm is responsible to keep the rear wheel behaving predictably during acceleration, braking and cornering. You can imagine that during these maneuvers, there are a lot of forces acting on the swing arm. During full acceleration, for instance, there can be as much as 800 newton meters on the rear wheel. The same as trying to lift the entire bike with just your lower arm. The swing arm is able to handle all these forces while weighing less than five kilograms. The movement of the swing arm is damped and absorbed by the shocks and springs, which are fully adjustable. So now the front fork. The front wheel is just as important for the handling of the bike as the rear. While the rear wheel is mainly responsible for acceleration, the front is responsible for braking and steering. The handling characteristics of the bike are influenced by what's called the rake. The rake is the angle that the front fork makes with respect to the vertical axis. So with the front fork, not only is the suspension completely adjustable, so is the rake. We use this adjustability to let the rider get the most out of the bike. So we have the frame and suspension setup to let the rider use all the power the bike has to offer, with the total weight coming in at under 220 kilograms. And we have a lot of power to be used, over 200 horsepower. As you might expect in our case, this power comes from the electric powertrain. The electric powertrain is everything from the battery pack to the motor controller and not unimportant, the electric motor. So about the motor, it takes the power from the battery pack and turns it into mechanical energy. It is custom designed for our superbike and is an iteration on the previous model. While keeping outside dimensions very similar, we were able to cram in 40% more useful rotor length. Together with some tuning, this results in 170 Nm from 0 RPM and keeps on spinning until 15,000 RPM, 10 times faster than your average washing machine. To increase torque and change RPMs, we have attached a gearbox. This roughly halves the RPM and doubles the torque. The chains and sprockets transferring the power to the rear wheel again double the torque, resulting in 800 Nm of torque, just as Steven mentioned. All this power takes a lot of energy. That is why we carry a big battery pack. Our runtime is limited by the size of our battery pack. We are carrying almost 600 lithium polymer cells. These can store a lot of energy but also release it quickly. The total capacity of our battery pack is 13.5 kilowatt hours. To control this power, we have a high-end motor controller. Its job is to control the power to the motor, exactly to the rider's command. It can also regen power when the bike is braking, charging the battery pack. There is more engineering in this bike than we can tell you now, but I will share a few highlights with you that shouldn't be missed. We are 3D printing the foot cracks from aluminium using topology optimization. We are using titanium bolts in the wheels to reduce weight and we can send live data to the pit box using our telemetry system and much, much more. Zooming out, we can see all the components together again. These make our bike race from a zero to 100 kilometers an hour in less than three seconds, powering on until 200 in less than nine seconds and ultimately topping out above 300 kilometers an hour. Due to lightweight materials like aluminium, chromoly and titanium, it's not only fast in a straight line, but also in the corners. And this is why we can call our bike an electric superbike. 
We once more want to thank you guys for watching our reveal. If you want more information about the project or our superbike, please visit our website or social media. And if you want to support us personally to go to our next race, you can check out our crowdfund. Thanks again and we hope to see you next year.